Welcome back for ebook three. In ebook one, we showed you how to safely fly to and from the Special Flight Rules area. To create this ebook, we went to the Potomac Tracon to learn from ATC the simple mistakes we pilots have been making on a daily basis since its inception in 2003 as the ADIS. FAA staff and controllers have happily helped us create our own top 10 list of the most common S for blunders. Let's go take a look at that list. Based on information from FAA enforcement officials and air traffic controllers, we've created our own what not to do top 10 list when flying in the Washington DC special flight rules area. Number 10, ignorance. Pilots claim to know nothing about the ESFRA. Number nine, touch and goes at an airport inside the ESFRA on a 1200 code. Number eight, entered Leesburg maneuvering area on a 1200 code. Number seven, correctly departed Leesburg on a 1226 code, but then went into the ESFRA outside of the Leesburg maneuvering area, still on a 1226 code. Number six, correctly exited the ESFRA and then turned on course and re-entered the ESFRA without a clearance. Number five, entered the ESFRA on a 1227 code outside the Leesburg maneuvering area while going to Leesburg. Number four, entered the ESFRA prior to calling Potomac for a transponder code or entered ESFRA while waiting for a code. Number three, after canceling IFR or on a VFR flight plan, pilots switched to 1200 prior to landing. Number two, departed inside the ESFRA on a 1200 code. Number one, inadvertent entry into the ESFRA while circumnavigating the airspace. One of my philosophies in life has always been, for every problem, there's a solution. I took our top 10 list of pilot mistakes in the Washington, D.C. Special Flight Rules area and presented it to the members of the York Travers Flying Club to see what their solutions might be. The membership is diverse as everything from a 6,500-hour military pilot right on down to a fledgling private pilot who received his license just a scant six months ago. Here are their solutions for our top 10 list. Behind me, you'll see a sectional chart circa February 2001 provided to us by AOPA. Note the absence of any ADIS or SFRA markings. Times are changing and the solution to this problem has to be education and pilot awareness. We CFIs need to make SFRA education a part of every flight review part of any flight or ground training scenario, especially to those airports within 100 miles of Washington, D.C. We also recommend thorough pre-flight using current charts so you're aware of your position to the special use airspace. Third, get a pre-flight briefing from Flight Service. Flight Service is required to receive acknowledgement from any pilot traveling within 100 miles of Washington, D.C. Purely by coincidence, the line on this old map is a trip from Smoketown, Pennsylvania to the Carolinas. Smoketown S-37 has the dubious distinction of having the only aircraft to breach the special use airspace twice since its inception and both incidents have made national news. In May 2005, this Cessna 150 caused the evacuation of the White House and again in 2009 a student pilot had to be escorted to Gaithersburg Airport. Know before you go, education is key. Hi, I've been a pilot for 10 years. Uh, it used to be that uh, you'd be able to uh, fly and do touch and goes just about anywhere. Well, I want you to know that things have changed. Uh, you now have to have an assigned discrete code to enter or fly within the ESFRA. Uh, an example might be someone with uh, mechanical problems who lands to get the repair checked out. Uh, has the repair fixed, uh, goes up to fly a couple touch and goes to verify and ascertain that everything is okay, uh, does not squawk on the assigned code to him and he'll get into trouble. You must have a discrete code before entering or flying within the ESFRA. Hi, just like number nine, I'd like to reemphasize the fact that you must have a discrete transponder code before entering the ESFRA. The Leesburg Maneuvering Area has its own transponder code of 1227. Number seven is a combination of both transponder errors and navigational errors. Pilots need to ensure when exiting the Leesburg Maneuvering Area that they go off the 1226 code 
and tune in their appropriate transponder code. Navigational errors correspond to both number seven and number six. Good situational awareness is basically the key to these problems. A tip for pilots flying GPS, DME, or handheld GPS equipped airplanes is to dial up the DCA VOR and at all times remain at least 35 miles outside the DC SFRA. Number five on the hot list is also exemplified by lack of situational awareness. Although the pilot squawked 1227, which is a correct code to get back into the Leesburg Maneuvering Area, they cut off the corner of the SFRA while returning to the Leesburg Maneuvering Area. In the absence of situational awareness, this is a costly mistake. When entering the Leesburg Maneuvering Area, of course, squawking the appropriate code of 1227, make sure you enter west of the RML 004 radial as depicted on the chart. When entering the DC SFRA, it's very important to do this in a timely fashion. When you call to get your code, you should do it five to 10 miles out or five to eight minutes, depending on what type of aircraft you're flying, to give the controller time to find your flight plan and properly allow you the code. Remember, you still can't enter this area without having your proper code and squawking the proper code. Treat it like Class B airspace. No code, no entry. The second issue is, if you're arriving early or late, please advise your controller so that they are able to access your code or your flight plan within the computer in a timely fashion as well. Give yourself plenty of time. This is a busy area and it's confusing. Pilots flying into the DC Esfera need to remain on their discrete transponder code until they're on the ground and in the chocks. VFR pilots are accustomed to switching to 1200 when switching to the CTAF and the airport is in sight. Don't let this happen. Hi. Number two. Departed inside the Esfera on a 1200 code. Four out of the top ten infractions on this list involve the use of the 1200 transponder code. I would like to re-emphasize the fact that you must use a discrete transponder code when operating anywhere within the ESFRA. The number one cause for violation is inadvertent entry to the SFRA. There's no excuse for failure to have appropriate situational awareness relative to the ground points defining the SFRA. The SFRA is defined off the DCA Vortac at 30 nautical miles. I suggest a five mile buffer. I also suggest monitoring this on your GPS, your handheld, or your DME to prevent inadvertent entry while circumnavigating the SFRA. Remember that ATC is the defining authority relative to your position. So giving yourself a wide buffer to protect yourself from inadvertent entry is the wisest possible and most prudent course of action any pilot can take to prevent this number one violating cause. In closing ebook three, what we've learned from months of research is there are two major mistakes. First, using a 1200 transponder code inside the SFRA and Navigational errors or poor situational awareness when trying to remain outside the SFRA. I'm not sure what more we can say about discrete transponder codes, except to say the 1200 is a no-no inside the Special Flight Rules area. As far as navigational and situational awareness, we can make some general recommendations. Old guys like myself flying by pilotage should leave a five-mile minimum buffer for our planned route outside the ESFRA, use easily identifiable landmarks like Point of Rocks. Point of Rocks can be easily identified by a minimum of three features on both the sectional chart and on the ground. And always know where you're at at all times. Young guys like Pete use fancy technology like GPS. If you set your GPS to the DCA VOR and remain 30 miles plus a five mile buffer outside the DCA VOR, you will remain outside the SFRA at all times. Be aware that Camp David, restricted area 4009, is in the northwest quadrant. For aviation safety videos, I'm Bob Reed. Have a safe flight.